of life push us off the path to a lifelong heart-to-heart relationship with our sons. And we do that through conscious, deliberate run chats that we have together with our sons as we're out and about um, enjoying fitness and running out in the great outdoors. Um, so I'm going to take a moment or so, just to let anyone who's uh, looking to join catch on without jumping straight into the content. Um, but I will encourage anyone who's here in the lobby now a little bit early, you might take this opportunity to share the show with any friends, any dads you might know who could uh, benefit and enjoy um, the content we've got here. I'll also remind you of what we spoke about last week. We go live each and every week, Friday mornings at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, uh, here on Facebook Live, then we simul, not simulcast, we, uh, we put the recording onto YouTube, and, uh, and soon we'll also be on a podcast, so you can listen uh, to the audio. But, uh, but definitely take the opportunity to like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash runwithmyson, if you want to get notifications for future episodes. They're every Friday morning at 10.30. And last week, in episode 7, we talked about the top 5 strategies for reducing technology. Because we live in an age when our, our youngsters are more and more engaged and, to a point, dependent on their technology. It's taking the place of traditional activities and relationships. It's getting in the way of our relationships with our sons. And so uh, what we looked at last week, episode 7, were the top 5 uh, te- strategies you can use, you can implement in your household uh, to wean, to cut back on some of that technology um, dependence. This week's episode are more strategies for reducing technology. Now, last week was a bit of a misnomer for two reasons. Number one, those weren't necessarily the top reasons. We've got some great reasons that you're going to learn about today. So while last week's were great reasons, I don't want to say that these are not. Um, in fact, the the final reason, uh, or sorry, strategy I'm going to give today might even be the the best of all of them, in my opinion. Um, But number two, I also called last week's episode the top five. I went back and watched and counted. I actually gave you six. So you got got a bonus uh, strategy last week. This week, though, you truly will get five, and and they're all great ones. So uh, now we've had a moment or so. We're going to jump right into our content. Going to try to keep it nice and quick for you, because I know you've got uh, busy schedules, Dad Squad. Uh, So, right off the top, number one uh, for today is to make the bedroom a technology-free zone. And this is a a great one. I've had uh, parents come to me talking about how difficult it is to get Johnny, to get Junior, uh, to put down his tablet and to get off the computer. You know, Minecraft. Seems like that one title comes up all the time. He's playing Minecraft all day long. Um, We go back. We look at some of the symptoms, we look at some of the, the, the log of when it's happening and, and so forth, and it becomes obvious that all of Johnny's technology is right there in his bedroom. He's got a television, he's got a computer, uh, he might even have a PlayStation or a, a Game Boy, he might have a video game system, all of it in his room, just feet away from where he sleeps. And, you know, you put technology that close to... You know, anyone, there's, there's going to be a temptation. So when access is that easy, it's, it's kind of hard to reduce it, isn't it, Dad? So the number one tip for today is to simply remove the technology from the bedroom. Now, that's not getting rid of it. He still has his television. He still has his laptop, his computer, uh, and perhaps even the video game systems. They're just not in the bedroom. Uh, and uh, clinicians have shown that one gets better sleep when this sort of machinery isn't around us, not because of, you know, radio waves in the air, but because, you know, when we're trying to fall asleep, our our brain is trying to settle and rest, and these devices are doing the exact opposite. They're trying to ramp up your attention and and add adrenaline to the system. Um, You ever tried falling asleep uh, to the television at night? You've probably determine that, wow, this is not helping me fall asleep. This is keeping me awake longer. And the same thing happens with our our children. So dad's number one is to take the technology out of the bedroom. It has a couple of bonus side effects too. Simply by removing it from the bedroom and putting it in the living room, you're adding a layer of accountability and monitoring. Because now when he's playing his video game, he's not cloistered away behind closed doors in his room. He's out in the open with the rest of the family. So you can just, you know, you can discuss what he's playing. Oh, wow, what are you learning about here? 
you know what, I think that other game you were playing yesterday was a little more educational. Let's go back to that one instead of this game. Or you've been playing enough of such and such. Why don't we change it to something? Those conversations are facilitated when you're all in the same room together. So taking the technology out of the bedroom and putting it in the living room, putting it someplace, you know, communal, public, is, is a great place to stop. Now, let me give you some warnings. This is not going to be popular at first. He's not going to like, if, if he's accustomed to having that in his room, he's not going to like it when you pull it out. Well, dads, that's your job. You've got to be the, you gotta be the bad guy sometimes, and you can use persuasion. You can sell it. You can be like, hey, I want it in the living room so we can play together. And then you need to follow up on that promise. You do need to play it with him. You know, take an interest in an active role. And number two, second warning is, you dads need to do the same thing. You can't very well tell your son to take the television out of his bedroom if you've got the big flat screen in your room and your nightly routine is to watch the evening news from bed because you're going to look like you're going to be a hypocrite. Um, so this is probably the toughest pill today to swallow, but if you're, going to, if you're going to take this piece of advice, you need to follow this piece of advice for yourself first. And I can, I can almost uh, tell you right now, persuasion-wise, it's, it's going to help you fall asleep at night. It's going to help you get a better night's sleep. So it's got two purposes. Anyway, long-winded, that was tip number one. Tip number two here for you is to not use technology as a babysitter. Uh, so all the effort, all these strategies that we're putting in place to try to reduce the use of technology is undermined when at 6.30 in the morning, the kids pop up, they rush into your bedroom, the first thing they're asking, well, can I have this, can we do this, can we? you know, and they're coming at you, or you're trying to work, maybe it's the middle of the day and you're at the computer yourself, you know, trying to balance the checkbook or something like that, and... The kids are coming at you looking for your attention. And what do you do? You say to them, go watch television for a little while. Or go pick up your tablet, entertain yourself. When you, dads, are the ones directing them to the technology, you've sort of undercut your own message. So do not use technology as a babysitter. And it's, it's something, it's a habit that if you've got, it's not something you're going to be able to, in a snap, just break like that. But you can utilize something we talked about last week in episode 7, and that is logging technology. So you're already keeping a, a log of when um, uh, your son uses technology and when he's, he's doing fit and active exercise activities. That same technique, logging, you can do it for yourself. You can take note every single time, oh, I did it again, I sent him off to the computer uh, just so I could have a few minutes of you know undivided attention so I could finish this task, so I could make this phone call, I sent him off. If you log that, it, over time, it'll convict you. You'll see just how often it's happening. It, it's going to be more than you think. It's, it's hard to stop a habit that's established. It's hard to establish a new habit. But one of the first steps is acknowledging the presence of that habit, good or bad. Uh, and a log is black and white. It's, it's right there. You know, it's going to tell you whether or not this is in place. So if, uh, if you find yourself sending your children off to be babysat, by the computer, by the, the video game system, log it so that you'll you'll know about it in the future. Um, now, you need to do more than just tell them, no, you can't play iPad, because that doesn't really solve your problem. They're still coming at you when you're trying to make the phone call. You need to be prepared with something else, and that I'm going to get to a little bit later in tip number five, so put a bookmark in that. Number three, we don't want to ban technology completely. We're just trying to reduce it. Uh, and this is an important one, because if, if you strictly, entirely take away all technology whatsoever, it, it's going to have a couple of negative consequences that you don't want. Number one, it's going to hurt your relationship with your son. There's going to be some resentment there when um, something that was there and part of his life and perhaps even become a bit of an entitlement, maybe a little bit too closely to his heart, is removed entirely. So by reducing instead of outright banning you're mitigating that a little bit. You don't want to, you know, estrange the relationship with your son. But number two, also, his relationship with his peers, his classmates, etc., at school, they're still doing this stuff. They're watching a little bit of television. I don't know what degree they're watching it, and we don't need to match their degree, but let's give him some so that, you know, he, at least he can participate in the water cooler talk, you know, that they have at school, playground talk, I guess is the closer terminology. But, uh, so don't entirely take it away, but you know, we're, we're here and we're in the business of reducing it because our ultimate goal and the whole purpose, as you know, of this show 
is to build our relationship with our son. So we don't want to take backward steps. You know what? And reducing technology is intended to help you get closer to one another, not further. So do it wisely. Do it as a reduction. All right, number four. Um, now this one, I, I'm going to say with a, a bit of a half-heartedness, and that is you can use technology to limit technology. There's software, we know about them, that will monitor the websites that we use and will uh, you know, set a timer that automatically shuts off uh, or outright blocks certain websites. You can use that, you know what, and, uh, and some parents have found it helpful. Uh, I'll point you to two of the better known ones, and that is um, Barracuda Web Blocker. Uh, it's, it's a service that works across all modern web browsers, and it, it will block, block specific sites. It'll block categories of sites that allow you to whitelist or blacklist certain sites. That's a great tool. Another one is, um, let's see, K9 Web product, Protection. K9 as in a dog, the letter K, the number 9. Uh, this one's great because they've also got apps for uh, iOS devices and Android devices, so you can use it also on those iPhones and iPads, etc., same deal, um, but here's why I'm only half-hearted into this one, technology to limit technologies, because if you present a mouse trap to a mouse, what you're going to do is train the mouse to be a better avoider of mouse traps, uh, and then you're going to need to, you're going to need to, you know, go, go and buy a new mouse trap. It's even better than the old one, and it's an escalating arms race, and your son is going to figure ways around your technological limit. You know, he's going to find out, well, Dad always puts this thing on right before I get on the computer. So maybe I just need to shut that off. Or he'll use a different computer. He'll go to the web at the library when he's supposed to be there choosing a book. He'll, he'll dash over to the computer so he can look at the websites that are blocked at home. He's going to find a way. You know what? And um, you just instinctively know this, don't you? Because you did the same thing when you were a little boy. Uh, there's a better way. There's a better way to do this. And I don't think it's with technology um, I, I don't think that's the substitute you need. I, I don't think your computer does. I think you, Dad, need to be the, the middleman that's standing between your child and this uh, distraction in his life. Number five, and this is the one that I hinted at earlier, is my favorite. You've got to fill that void. So when you take away something, you're, you're creating a void. Now, in, in the number of hours that your son has per day in the... Uh, um, capital of his attention. You know, he's now got to spend that capital someplace. I can't do it playing, you know, Geometry Dash on my iPad anymore. Where am I going to put my attention? You know, and if you don't want it to become, you know, drawing with crayons on the wall or getting in fights with my little brother, you've got to fill that void now with something productive and, and um, more memorable. If you can come up with something that is even more stimulating than the the technology you're removing, the favorite television program, something that's more engaging and um, stimulating, something that's going to create memories that are going to last a lifetime, then you've already won the battle because he is going to want that way more than he ever wanted the iPad time. So here's the trick. What, I what are you going to fill that void with? What activity are you going to offer as an alternative? And you've got to be prepared in advance, dads, because if, if you're trying to do this on the fly... You know what, Monday, I'm just deciding right now, is going to be no iPad day. And Monday rolls around and your son asks you for iPad and the answer is no. Well, you've got to make a decision right away. Where are you going to point him or else it's going to blow up. You know, and I can guarantee it. So do some thinking ahead of time. Come up with something. And ideally, something that you yourself are a key part of. You're going to go take him someplace. We're not going to play iPad today because we're going to go on a bike ride. We're going to go together to a brand new, you know, we're going to go pick strawberries. I was just looking at some video footage today from an old childhood favorite excursion of ours. We used to go uh, as a family on these mystery rides on certain Saturday mornings. And one of them we'd go to in Brewster, Massachusetts was a herring run where we could see live herring fish annually fight their way, battle their way upstream across a sequence, a series of little locks that are designed to give them staged access to whatever their breeding grounds were. I didn't understand all of it as a kid, but how great it was to go and see these fish inches away from me fighting their way upriver, and I would catch them with my bare hands and help them out. We'd run down the river and release them a little bit further upstream. Um, I don't know what the activity is for you, but schedule some fun activities 
into your month. You know, maybe two of these a month are great. If you, if you can't cut off a technology wholehearted cold turkey right away, I understand that, dads. You schedule two fun activities, that's two fewer days of technology you've got on the calendar. So start, start doing some of that. Maybe it doesn't involve you. Maybe it truly is that situation I, I brought up earlier where you're trying to sleep in 6 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and your young ones are asking you for something and you yourself can't be the one that's replacing the technology because you're trying to sleep in. Um, but you've got something else in place. I just bought a brand new workbook with fun activities you know, that, that Junior can play. Uh, this one actually is kind of close to home for me. My, I've got a son who loves chess. He, you know, is always looking for a chess partner or someone to play with him. Um, and when I can't provide that, we've got now, uh, we used to have to send him to a website so he could play other kids online. And, and that was a, a, a reasonable alternative. But when technology is what we're trying to cut back on, uh, I found an even better one. And that are, that is these little workbooks that are um, chess strategy and, um, and almost like a crossword puzzle of the day that's chess puzzles. He has to figure out the sequence of moves, and he loves them. He can sit in that thing and for hours. Maybe it's you know the Harry Potter series of books if your child is a reader. Um, Captain Underpants is quite popular in our household these days with our 9-year-old, 7-year-old, and even our 4-year-old who doesn't know how to read but loves looking at the pictures. So by gathering some of these fun books, activities, and having them um, uh, rationed out, you don't just give it whenever. You hold those in reserve for those moments when they're looking for technology. And what you give them is Captain Underpants to play with or to read. Um, uh, board games are great. Um, you know, provided he's got a, a, a sibling or a, a friend on a site who can play with him. Um, you don't want a, uh, an activity that needs to be supervised. I wouldn't give the four-year-old Play-Doh and give him free run of the Play-Doh, you know, because... Well, I won't tell you why. You'll figure that one out for yourselves if you haven't already. But you've got to give a, an alternate activity. You've got to fill the void with something, Dad Squad. So do your homework. Think in advance. What do they love? What can, can take the place of technology and fill that void? Because if you don't fill it with something, it, it's going to be trouble, um, and there's going to be whining, and there's going to be crying. So we don't want that. We want to build our relationship with our sons. Um, and, of course, the number one activity and what, and in every instance, if you can do, you ought to be doing is getting with your son together and doing something fun. Going out in the backyard and playing some soccer, um, a little bit of two-person baseball. It, it's, a, it's a real thing. You can pitch, you can hit, you know, you don't have to run around bases. Um, a family walk around the block. Uh, even if you need to go outside and do some, some yard work yourself, you, you include your children into it. Those are the types of activities we should be filling the void with. Uh, and they pay off doubly. They, they'll reduce that idle um, time in front of the screen, and they will get us out and about doing something. They will add to our fitness bank that will pay off in the future with, with dividends of better health and longer life. All right, well, dads, there's your homework for the week. Uh, don't feel like you got to dive on all five of these, but pick, pick something in that list that resonated with you. Uh, if you heard something that, that made sense to you, hit that like button. Uh, and, and tell somebody else about it. And by all means, get out there this week. Uh, it's a rainy day here in Connecticut, which is why I'm not sitting in the backyard as I have been for recent episodes. I'm here in the living room. But um, you know what? Take advantage of the sunny weather. It's summertime as I'm recording this live, so that's plenty of opportunity for all kinds of great stuff. Hikes and bikes and um, jump ropes and sidewalk chalk, you know what, are just the starting points. And, um, and I encourage you to go and find those starting points in your own household. But uh, do subscribe, do like, do hit the, the, the button there to be reminded of our next show next week. It's going to be Friday, 10.30 a.m. And the topic I'm pretty excited about, we're going to get into, uh, for the first time on the show here, some of the conversational techniques that we can use to get closer to our, to get closer to our sons. And that's our point. We want to get closer. So... What, what sort of conversational things do you use when that awkward silence is there? If you're going on a run together, what are you going to talk about? That's the topic that we're going to hit on next week. We're going to teach you all about kind of like bridges. Uh, I'm just going to hint a little bit here, but you're, you're going to learn a lot of great techniques that are going to help you. So don't miss out. Within minutes of this live broadcast, we're going to put the reminder on the Facebook page so you can click on it and, and be reminded when we go live next week. Um, but, but don't miss that one. 
All right, dads, go out there, push against those headwinds. Do not let those headwinds of life push you off the path to a lifelong heart-to-heart relationship with your son. But be deliberate. Be um, focused and conscious in your conversation and in your actions. Set a great example and have a great week together with your son. All right, thanks for tuning in.